Hey, happy Monday morning, everyone. Welcome back to Morning Musings. My name is Don K. Preston. I am the president of Preterist Research Institute of Ardmore, Oklahoma. We are taking a look at, we're closing in on the, uh, on finishing our response to Dr. David Hester and his 23 affirmative arguments that he presented in our formal public debate October the 14th, or excuse me, July 14th and the 15th uh, here in Ardmore, Oklahoma. That was 2016, of course. And his argument number 22 out of 23 arguments was that old standby argument of all futurists, Acts chapter 1, 9 to 11. And Dr. Hester pointed out, look, Jesus left in a physical body, visibly, on a cloud. And in like manner means he's got to come back just like he left. Well, I have to tell you, this kind of argumentation reveals once again a failure to correlate Acts chapter 1 with the rest of the New Testament commentary uh, about the coming of the Lord. Uh, Milton Terry made an observation in his marvelous works on biblical apocalyptics, and he said, whatever we may think of the coming of the Lord of Acts chapter 1, it is improper without tremendous textual evidence to divorce the coming of the Lord of Acts chapter 1 from the comments in the rest of the New Testament about when the coming of the Lord was to be. Now that's proper hermeneutic. What is the evidence to divorce Acts chapter 1 from the rest of the New Testament testimony about the coming of the Lord? And the rest of that testimony is so emphatic. Jesus said, there's some standing here which shall not taste of death until they see the Son of Man coming in His kingdom. Matthew 16, 28. Jesus said He was coming on the clouds of glory in that generation. Matthew 24, 30 through 34. Peter said that the coming of the Lord was at hand. Pardon me, that is, the end of all things had drawn near. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 7. James said, Be patient, therefore, brethren, until the coming, the parousia, of the Lord. The coming of the Lord has drawn near. James 5, 8 and 9. And in Revelation chapter 1 and verse 7, which of course says, Behold, He is coming with the clouds. Every eye shall see him, even those who pierced him. And all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. Dr. Hester correlated, now watch this, Dr. Hester correlated Acts chapter 1 with Revelation chapter 1 and verse 7. All right, that means that the coming of the Lord of Acts 1 and Revelation chapter 1, verse 7, are the same coming. But the coming of the Lord of Revelation chapter 1 was at hand. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave to him to show to his servants things which must shortly come to pass. The time is at hand, literally at hand. Revelation 1, 1 to 3. Revelation chapter 22, verse 12. Behold, I come Quickly, not rapidly. The word is not in guteros. Behold, I come quickly. These things must shortly take place. And so, here is Dr. Hester affirming that Acts chapter 1 is the coming of the Lord of Revelation chapter 1. It's the coming of the Lord of James, of Peter, of Matthew, etc., etc., and yet, invariably, invariably, the New Testament writers posit that coming of the Lord as very, very near. It was coming soon. It was coming quickly. As a matter of fact, Hebrews 10, 37, in a very, 
very little while, the one who is coming will come and will not tarry. You know, I brought up Hebrews 10, 37 numerous times in our formal debate, and Dr. David Hester said literally not one word about that statement uh, and about that text. So, to go back to Milton Terry's comment, who said, whatever we may perceive the coming of the Lord of Acts chapter 1 to be, it is improper to divorce it from what the rest of the New Testament has to say about when the coming of the Lord was to be. Without powerful, textual, contextual evidence to divorce it from the rest of the New Testament testimony, there is no justification for doing so. And that means that the coming of the Lord in Acts chapter 1 was very near when Hebrews was written, when James was written, when Peter was written, when Revelation was written. You know, we've got more on Acts chapter 1 and the coming in like manner on the flip side. In the meantime, let me urge you to get a copy of my book, Like Father, Like Son on Clouds of Glory. I have an extensive discussion of Acts chapter 1, 9 to 11 in this book. <coughs> Pardon me. And so, order your copy today. Go to my website, donkpreston.com or eschatology.org. Order the book, Like Father, Like Son, on Clouds of Glory. Make a note. Send me a note that says, you saw the offer on YouTube or Facebook, and I'll refund your shipping, saving you $5. Well, thanks so much for joining me for this morning's Morning Musings. We'll see you, Lord willing, on the flip side.